Hello everyone, I'm the Tax Pro, and today we are going to talk about bank reconciliations within QuickBooks Online. So first let's talk about what is a bank reconciliation and why we do them. Bank reconciliations involve comparing data from the bank to data in QuickBooks, and then reconciling that data and determining if there are any differences and why. Um, so this is a very, very important part of record keeping for a business. We do reconciliations with bank accounts, savings accounts, loans, credit cards, and really any other sort of account in which you can compare to a third party document. Um, every once in a while, I'll see a client that may have a loan that the bank for some reason just doesn't provide statements. If you can compare to the balance in the portal, I like to reconcile to that. And then maybe just do like a screen grab um, of the portal contents to show on this particular date, this was the balance of this loan. And um, so what are the benefits of doing bank reconciliations? Because oftentimes they can kind of be a pain. You can catch a lot of errors. Sometimes those errors are on your part, entering the information in QuickBooks online. However, sometimes those errors are on the bank's part. Um, for example, we've seen clients that have said, um, say maybe deposited money into the bank and let's say they deposited $19,000 and then the bank misrecorded that deposit as 1,900. If we had not reconciled, we would not have found $17,000 of that client's money, right? Other things that may occur is there might be something that shows up on the bank statement that maybe isn't a charge in QuickBooks. Um, maybe we haven't entered it or maybe it didn't come in through the bank feed. Every once in a while, the bank feed will not bring items over. Um, those items can add up things like membership fees for American Express, um, interest that is charged on credit cards. Those are deductions on your tax return, right? So when we don't see those and we don't record those in QuickBooks Online, we are paying more in taxes. So it's really important to make sure that you are performing bank reconciliations. We perform them every month when we get the bank statements. Okay, so banks may have um, different closing dates too when it comes to statements. Credit cards sometimes are not always closed at the same time as um, checking accounts. You know, sometimes credit cards are closed in the middle of the month. Um, so you just want to make sure whenever you get a statement or whenever a statement is ready, you know, go online, download that statement and then reconcile. So I'm gonna show you how to do a reconciliation. I'm also gonna show you a couple of things that might happen when you're doing a reconciliation. Right here, we have our demo company in QuickBooks Online. This is ABC Corporation. Again, it's a fake company. I went ahead and I just Googled, you know, business bank statement sample, and I got this on the left. So this is a completely fake bank statement. It's not real. Um, we are gonna reconcile to this bank statement though. So in order to get ready for this reconciliation, I've got my bank statement and I've got QuickBooks open. So the first thing that we're gonna do within QuickBooks is we're gonna go up to this gear icon under tools you're gonna see the option to reconcile. Now, when you go to reconcile, this is the page that pops up. You can select what account you want to reconcile. We're gonna reconcile primary checking, but you can see credit cards are listed in here. This loan for the Ford is listed in here. Pretty much anything that is on the balance sheet is going to be in this reconciliation drop down menu. We like to reconcile every single item on the balance sheet that we can possibly reconcile. Um, it means that your profit and loss is going to be more accurate when your balance sheet is accurate. Now, right here, you're going to see this little blue link where it says last statement ending date 331 2025. If you have never reconciled before, this will not show up. This is because the last time that we reconciled this account was 331 of 2025, okay? So if you've reconciled before, you'll see this little link. If you have not reconciled before, it won't be there. 
Now, we have a beginning balance, which is actually the ending balance from this 331 statement. Again, if you have never reconciled before, QuickBooks won't have a way to pull over a balance, right? Because this is an ending balance from a prior statement. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take this beginning balance and make sure it matches our bank statement. Every once in a while, it's not going to. That might be because something changed in QuickBooks. If something changed in QuickBooks after the reconciliation, you normally get a little notice here and it'll be like, you're not ready to reconcile. Your beginning balance is off by this amount. Let us help you fix it. And then it'll show you what's happened and then you can go in and, and figure out, you know, why was that item deleted? Um, every once in a while, like a bank beginning balance might not match. Um, that could be, you know, maybe we reconciled to a statement and then that statement was reissued and we didn't realize it was reissued. So we haven't reconciled to the new statement. Um, so here we see that the opening balance matches this beginning balance. Perfect. Now we're going to go here to the statement ending balance and we want to pull the statement ending balance off of the statement. So right here it says closing balance. Sometimes it'll say ending balance. It might say like balance as of this date. Um, you want to find the ending balance. Every once in a while, if you have a credit card account, there might be multiple ending balances. And sometimes you'll have like, it'll say, you know, pay in full balance or something like that. And your pay in full balance will actually be less than the actual balance on the statement because they give you a break on interest. Make sure you're grabbing the right ending balance. Okay, now statement ending date. This statement is fake, so it doesn't have an ending date. I'm just gonna throw in April 30th of 2025. You'll see that there's no dates on here. Uh, you will have an ending date on your statement, right? So we're gonna click start reconciling. And what it's gonna do is it is going to show you a couple different things. So up here in the top, it's gonna to show that we are reconciling the primary checking. We are looking at the statement ending date for April 30th of 2025. This is the statement ending balance, and this is the beginning balance. Over here on the right-hand side, this is showing us what we have reconciled so far. So this is saying right here, the cleared balance. Okay, well, this is what we're saying based on how we've you know started reconciling. This is showing us the cleared balance. This is showing us how many payments and how many deposits we have, showing that we have cleared the bank. And then this is the difference, okay? So right now our difference is pretty high. Now, if you use the bank feed, some of these will be checked for you if they have cleared the bank feed already. So when you come in here, what you'll see is this cleared balance will look different and maybe you know, you'll know you log in and these items have been added through the bank feed, okay? So you'll see, okay, well, we have 6,000 in payments, 10,000 in deposits. We're still really far off, okay? And then under this column right here, this little thing is saying that it's been added from the bank feed. So we haven't added anything from the bank feed um, just because this isn't a real company and I haven't imported anything. Um, but you may see some of them checked. You can always choose to check all this is gonna be off, I did that on purpose um, to show you where some mistakes may be. Sometimes this will work and it'll be zero and as long as you know that everything's in there, you're good to go. You can also on select all if you wanna start over. You have really, really long statements and it has not reconciled and you don't have a zero dollar difference. Sometimes you have to deselect all of them. You have to go through and manually check them off. Really big pain in the butt. I'm gonna kind of show you a, a very shortened version of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, well, we have this payment for the credit card of 5,400. Do we see the payment? Yep. All right. We have a payment for insurance for 3,000. Okay. We have deposit for 500 and then one for 10. Okay, I see both of those. 1,500 for electricity. Okay, so I don't see the 1500. 
So if we were relying on bank feeds, that would mean that maybe the 1500 had come over. If we're entering these manually, okay, maybe it just didn't, maybe we didn't enter it, right? So we have a $1,500 and it was for electricity, right? So I'm gonna enter the expense and you can do this while you're reconciling. So we're gonna have, you know, electric um, provider or something like that. I'm just making this up as we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna add that as a vendor on the slide. So we're not gonna enter any of his details. And this is gonna go into utilities, right? Make sure that your primary account is correct. We can put, you know, it was a check that we sent in. Maybe we have a reference number. Um, and it was 1500. You don't have to put payment method. Oops. You also don't have to put the reference number and you don't have to put a description. We're gonna save and close. And would you look at that, now it's there. So now we can check it off, 1500. Every once in a while I should back up. Every once in a while when you do that, this 1500 won't immediately pop up. You may have to click save for later and then resume reconciling in order for the 1500 to pop up, okay? Okay, so then we have 600, 3500, and then we have 80, okay? So now we can click finish now, but one of the main mistakes that I see people make, so do you see this guy up here? For 226, we have a bill payment, this ACH, that went out to Bluebird Technologies for 966. That happened in February. We're now in April, and this was an automatic ACH. I need to go figure out what happened with that, right? Because most likely we need to resend that. If it didn't clear the bank and it was an ACH that we sent, there was probably a problem. Maybe we didn't fully go through the submission process. Maybe we forgot to hit confirm something along those lines but don't just leave these unreconciled items sitting up there i see that all the time i see this too a lot with income so people might like record a payment and then they'll record another payment or when they get the payment they'll record it as a deposit and guess what you just double counted your revenue you increased your tax bill so just make sure that you're paying attention this one we need to investigate so we can click finish now Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put finish now, and then as part of our reconciliation process, I'll pop up here to the bank register. I'll say, okay, let's filter what is not reconciled, okay? And then that'll give me the information on what transactions I need to investigate. Right here, I need to investigate this Bluebird Technologies payment. Where did it come from? Why is it on here? Did I record it to the wrong account? That kind of thing, okay? So that is reconciliation. I'm going to quickly recap for you, but before I quickly recap, if you could do me a favor and like and subscribe, um, it helps us continue to make free content. Um, so let's go back through and do a recap. Okay, so we are gonna do reconciliations. Reconciliations are important because they can pair bank information to QuickBooks online information. We should be doing them as soon as, well not as soon, but as soon as you're ready with the statement, you have the statement, everything's been entered into QuickBooks, we should be doing them monthly, right? And so once you're ready, you've got your statement in hand, you're gonna go up here to this gear icon and you're gonna hit reconcile. You're gonna pick what account you wanna reconcile, checkings account, savings account, credit cards, loans, Pretty much all the balance sheet items that you can reconcile to a third party should be reconciled, okay? This also includes like sales tax liabilities, payroll liabilities. Those are nice to reconcile. That way you know that those are accurate. I cannot tell you the number of times that I've logged in to a new client's QuickBooks and their payroll tax liability is like negative 30,000. And what that tells me is they've missed out on most likely expensing $30,000 worth of payroll. Now, every once in a while, that's correct because they've prepaid something. But oftentimes, nobody's paying attention to those liability accounts and they're going negative. And guess what? 
we haven't claimed those. We haven't expensed those on our tax return. We've overpaid in taxes, okay? So if you reconcile those on a regular basis, we're good to go. Another one that I see that I like to reconcile is undeposited funds. Undeposited funds is an area where a lot of double payments like to hide. So if you go to reconcile undeposited funds and it has this massive balance in it, you've probably double recorded your revenue and you're paying too much in taxes because of a simple bookkeeping mistake. And I'll go over these items in other videos. Um, so that is why it's so important though to reconcile. So we're gonna select our, our account that we're gonna reconcile. We're gonna confirm the beginning balance. We're gonna enter the ending balance. We're gonna enter the statement ending date. At that point in time, we'll hit start reconciling and we will start reconciling to the bank statement, right? Sometimes it's super fast, sometimes it takes a long time, especially if you have really a lot of transactions in an account or a lot of transfers. Um, make sure that you investigate items that do not reconcile. So if you have items that have not cleared the bank, we need to figure out why, and then we need to correct that in QuickBooks Online, okay? That's the, that's how you reconcile. That's the importance of it. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.